can hear it kind of fizzing. You can see some of the yeast on top. I may go another couple days before I rack it, especially with it fizzing that good. So that's bucket one. Let's look at bucket two. So I'm just covering these back up with a towel. I didn't have a lid. It's really starting to smell like alcohol now. This one's a little further along. Looks like it's almost at the end stage. It's still fizzy. It doesn't have as much yeast on top. It's the one that fermented first. So I may give it another day. I'll probably rack this one first. But I'm going to go from primary fermentation, strain it out through here. This is just for a collection. And then I'll go over here into a gallon jug. And what I collect here, what's been strained out, will go in the gallon jug for secondary fermentation. And that'll last for about three weeks. And I'll put an airlock on the top so it can vent and let some of the CO2 out. And over here's another batch. I'm gonna put this batch in a plastic jug to see uh, if they taste any different. This is a glass container. I'm gonna put this other one in a glass gallon jug. I don't know. I don't know if they'll taste any different or not. Okay, this is the stuff that was in the bottom of the bucket after I strained it out. You don't want to transfer that into the secondary fermentation. You want to strain it off so that it doesn't give your wine an off taste. And so my final racking, after this goes through secondary fermentation, I'll do a final racking and I'll use a coffee filter. So I'll use a strainer like this and then pour my wine through it and that'll give it a nice clear look and it'll get rid of any final yeast that's in the bottle. So we've racked these now. I need to make the airlock so I'm going to poke a hole, put a little hose at the top, make sure the hose does not touch the liquid and then that'll allow that CO2 to vent as it continues to ferment. You can see some tiny little bubbles here. I have my airlock here. It'll let bubbles vent out as CO2 builds up. There's a little bit of sediment. This one, actually, this one has a lot of sediment uh, still strained out. This one has a little bit already at the bottom, and this one just hasn't had time to settle. But uh, you leave a little bit of airspace at the top, not much. You know, I wouldn't want this bottle to only be half full. I'd want to fill it up and get it close to the top because I don't want it to oxidize, and I want to limit the amount of oxygen that's in there. This one's still bubbling a little bit, so it'll continue to ferment for three weeks. I tasted it. Tastes good, really strong. I think it's at least 10% alcohol, maybe a little higher than that. So really strong, and that's um, pretty good for a natural yeast. All right, so I gave that a little spin before I dropped it in there, but I couldn't film that part. You want to read from the bottom of the meniscus, and we're almost at 1.000 which is what we're shooting for. We're really at 1.001, 1 .001, close to it. But you want to read at the very bottom of that meniscus. So I'm using a bed sheet, in this case, as a filter when I filter my wine. So I normally just put it in, boil it for about 10 minutes, just like you would in canning, to sterilize it. And then I let it cool, take it out, put it on top of a five gallon bucket, and then I strain my wine through that when I'm racking. All right, so here's a faster way. So like if you get tired of waiting on the coffee filters, they'll obviously do a better job. This will do a sufficient job. You, I'm using an old sheet that I've washed and then I put it in a sanitizing mixture, let it set for a while, and then strained it out and then washed it out with spring water. But all I've done is clamped it down and it's 10 times faster than those coffee filters and then you can just pour it directly in there and let it strain and not have to wait so long. It just depends on how much stuff you have. You definitely want to wash it and let it soak in some spring water after you've sanitized it. Sometimes I boil mine and instead of using any kind of sanitizing agent that could get locked in those fibers because then that could alter the taste of your wine. 
boiling it's really the best way to go. And ideally a perfectly white sheet with no dye in it would be the best. But I've used this before, it hasn't changed the taste. And I just keep uh, boiling it each time I'm going to use it.